The cedars in Lebanon can grow up to 30 feet in diameter. That's huge. And rise as high as a 12-story building. A Syrian is a mountain, and it's 9,000 feet high. And King David harkens back to his days as a shepherd, where he would watch awesome storms rumbling throughout the deserts with frightening intensity. Imagine being a shepherd boy, and it's dark, and these lightning bolts are coming down, and the thunder's loud, and it's pouring rain out. You know, we've seen that here. Amen. And he writes about these experiences in Psalms 29.4 to show us or allow us to imagine the incredible strength of God. In Psalms 29.4, it says these words, The voice of the Lord is powerful. Remember that. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Amen. And then verse 5, it says these words. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, yea, the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. That's not the city Lebanon. That is those powerful trees that grow 30 feet in diameter and as high as a 12-foot building. The voice of the Lord destroys those. That's amazing. Those cedars of Lebanon. The 9,000 foot mountain. Is shaken by the voice of the Lord. In other words, God's voice is like a mighty earthquake. That makes the plains and the mountains range. Shake and quiver. In Psalms 29.7, it says these words, The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. Now some of you are probably thinking, well, the voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire in hell, or divides the flames of the fire that was, we saw here. No. This is talking about lightning bolts, the forked zigzag incredible lightning bolts. Think about this. Think about a lightning bolt. Think about the incredible power of 40 million lightning bolts that strike the USA each year. In a fraction of a second, these lightning bolts discharge 100 million volts of electricity. 100 volts of electricity. 100 volts of electricity down on the earth with 13,000 million horsepower in each lightning bolt of electricity. But a single utterance from the voice of the Lord is far more potent than all the lightning in the 1,800,000 thunderstorms that take place in every given moment around the planet. The voice of the Lord is stronger than any of what I've just said to you. That's how powerful the voice of the Lord is. And God spoke the world into existence. That's a powerful voice. Amen. In all the splendor of God's power, God's majesty, and God's voice, he doesn't hoard it all for himself. He empowers those he created. And to believe in him and trust him and have faith in him. He empowers us with that same power. I have given you authority and dominion and power over every serpent, every scorpion, every snake, and every wily trick of the devil. You and I have a powerful voice when we would stand up and speak for the Lord. It is the voice of the Lord. It says that it breaks asunder the very disobedience of the heart, if I could say that. You can speak into people's lives so powerfully that it'll be with them the rest of their lives, what you spoke into their lives, because that's coming from the voice of the Lord and the power of his voice. 
It's there for eternity. It never leaves. Amen. Thank God that he gives us that. Because that's how we find peace when we panic. Amen? How many have ever panicked? I've panicked once. I panic all the time. I panic when the restaurant gets busy and there's 30 orders up there and there's just me in the kitchen. But I only panic for a few seconds until I get it together. Amen. I just go, oh, okay, better get it together here. <laughs> Amen. He gives us endurance when we're empty. He gives us courage when we're cowardly. In the power of God's voice over our lives, he can do all of this for us. But not only do we desperately need the strength of God when we are in funky moods. Nobody here ever gets in a funky mood. I know that. Oh, when tragedy strikes. But we also need his power to avoid doing what we know we shouldn't do. Paul says, I know what I do, I should not do, but yet ahead, I go ahead and do it. What shall I say then? Shall sin have dominion over me? Shall I continue to sin? And he says, don't be stupid. Amen. Because the Lord of the voice begins to speak to him, and then after that, he begins to tell us how to get out of that mindset. Amen. I want to talk about temptations. Did you know that temptations are with you every single day? Come on, say amen. You were tempted to hit that guy in front of you in the grocery store when his buggy's so full, and he's taking out his groceries like this. Or the person that's going down the highway 40 miles an hour, and you can't pass him because there's too many in the passing lane. I wonder what you're saying in your car. I wonder what the Lord is hearing. What kind of conversation does the Lord get to hear in those times? Amen. I, I won't go any further on that one because there's a bumper car sticker that says these words. Lead me not into temptation. I'm perfectly capable of finding it on my own. C.S. Lewis said these words. A silly idea is currently that good people do not know what temptation means. This is an obvious lie. Only those who try to resist temptation know how strong it is. Amen? Yeah. So what are temptations? Temptations are the unethical or immoral shortcuts that lead us down dead-end roads, lead us into unrighteousness. I'll give you an example. You're on Netflix or any other crackle or whatever, how many places you look at. And you are watching a movie and they use the Lord's name in vain. Or there's maybe one sexual innuendo that you shouldn't be watching. Or there's a couple of swear words, a couple of murders. Oh, well, it's not going to hurt me. I'm saved. You can say that or you can go, I'm not watching this. This isn't right. This isn't holy. This is unholy. And I'm not going there. Do you follow the voice of the Lord? That is telling you to split that scene? Or do you give in to the temptation and watch the whole thing? We're all tempted. Amen? Well, how about taking credit for someone else's ideas? You ever done that? That's a real temptation. How about when income tax comes? Oh, I'm going to hit on everybody now. Are you tempted to fill it out wrong so you can get money back? Are you tempted not to put what you should put on it so you don't have to pay as much as you're supposed to pay? Because that's all temptations. We're all tempted. Does God speak to you when you're doing your income tax? He speaks to me. He says, take your income tax to your bookkeeper, to your accountant. 
because my accountant is a Christian, and she'll do it right. <laughs> so that's what I do. I take care of everything. And if I pay, I pay. If I don't, I don't. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is God trying to spoil my fun in life? God trying to spoil your fun by t telling you, don't do this, don't do that? Can't you read the signs? No, God's not trying to. When God speaks to you when you go through temptations and when you're trying to do things wrong, this is a loving God who wants to protect you from emotional, physical, and relational and spiritual destruction. That's what he wants to do. That's why he does those things. That's why he bothers you. Lord, why do you have to bother me now? Having such a good time. Because your good time is not my good time. And that ultimately comes when we give in to temptations. Things begin to happen in our lives that we don't want it to happen. We slowly walk away from the Lord. We slowly let our minds and our heart and our spirit walk away from God and try to live as though we're still in his presence. What an awkward way to live. Amen. So how do we overcome? I don't know. There's a lot of ways to overcome these temptations and all these things. You have to realize the power of the voice of God when he speaks to you. You have to realize when God speaks to you that it's God. And how do you know that? Because the temptation that you are doing urges you so strongly to do, and the voice of God comes in, and now there's a fight between you and God. But you have to let the voice of God speak to you if you want to make heaven your home. Amen. Amen. You have to read your Bible every day. This here. That's a Bible. I got one on my phone too. King James. I like the King James. Amen. Read your Bible. It doesn't matter how long. Just read it. I didn't read too long this morning. I read the last chapter of Timothy, 2 Timothy, and I read the book of Titus. That was it. 15 minute read. But... Reading that, I got a lot of stuff in my mind and in my heart that God was speaking to me about. So it's not how long you read your Bible, it's are you reading your Bible? Amen. It's funny in these days, you know, we'll spend more time on the internet or on our games or Facebook or YouTube in one day than we do all month with God. That should be the other way around. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you read your Bible every day, when you realize the power of the voice of God is speaking to you, when you do, you'll realize that it's not God's attitude towards you that needs to change, but your attitude towards God that needs to change. Amen. Well, I'm okay. I'm fine, you know. I haven't felt the presence of God in like three, four months, but I'm fine. I'm doing okay. You know, I have no idea what the voice of God is telling me because I don't hear it. And read the Bible like, why do I have to do that? Amen. That's the same thing as being a child with a dad. I have a dad, but why do I need to talk to him? What's with that? The Lord Jesus Christ is your dad. He's your father, the Bible says. I know. So what do I need to talk to him for? What do I need to know what he wants me to do in life? Or why should I even care what he wants me to do in life? That's why you need to read your Bible. To find out what he wants with your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Begin to serve others. That'll help you too, to overcome temptations. Going out of your way to help other people. I was in the mall with my wife in Langley on Friday night. We had to go up to Langley for reasons, and 
I'm sitting at Tim Hortons, you know, because I'm not a shopper and most men aren't. So she says, I'm going to look around. I says, well, I'll go to Tim Hortons and I'll sit there and have a coffee and a donut. I had eight little donuts. Timmy's, I was bad. Lord, I'm sorry. Amen. But I'm sitting there and I'm, I, they have these little chairs by a fireplace looking out the front door where people come in and out. And I was amazed. This is about serving others. This lady was on a, a walker thing. And she was going through this door and having a hard time going through the door. So as she was going through the door, this lady was walking in, turned around, held the door for her. Just a little gesture of serving people. She didn't have to do that. But she did. She turned around and says, Lord, I'm amazed at that. You know why? Because five or six people just came in before her and didn't even notice it. It's an incredible thing when you can serve other people just in small matters like that. You know? You're in a grocery store. You're in a lineup superstore. And you have half a buggy of groceries and somebody behind you just two things. Can you serve that person? Of course you can. Hey, come on. Go ahead of me. You only got a couple of things. That's serving people. That's taking your mind off of yourself and putting it on others. Amen? That's a great thing to do. Be generous. Give. Help people. Give in the kingdom, but give to others too. Help people. Amen? Somebody needs something, you have it, you don't want it, and you can't use it, give it to them. Why do you always have to have money for it? Just give it to them. You're not using it. Amen? Say, here, you can have this. What's wrong with that? Well, the world needs money. Amen? We need money too, but you know, the Bible says, given, it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, measured forth, it shall be given. There's a spiritual principle there. Another spiritual principle, when you give to people, out of the abundance of what God has given you, it puts your mind on the Lord and helps you grow in Christ and separates you from temptation more. Because now you're living as a servant of Christ. And you're not living as a servant of the world. And that's what Jesus wants us to be, is separated from the world. Amen. And be children of heaven. Thank God for that. Amen. But most of all, we have to be patient. Oh, well, this is a hard one. It's a hard one for everybody. We need to be patient. That means you need to endure. And while you're enduring, be kind. Because when you're being patient, sometimes we lose our patience, inner patience. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll give you an example. 1145, doctor's office. That's your appointment. 12.45, no doctor. 1.45, still no doctor. Everybody's going to see the doctor but me. I'm not going yet. I've been there two hours. What's going on? One guy walks in and goes to the doctor. I'm going, I'm being very patient. I said, that's it. I'm done with this. So I went out and I said, how come everybody's seen their doctor? Well, my appointment was at 1145 and I've been here for two hours. And everybody that's walked in this door has seen their doctor. What's going on? Well, your doctor's late. I said, well, then why didn't you come and tell me? Then I would have kept my patience. But now I'm mad. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, okay, thank you. And then five minutes later, I was in there. Amen. But you do. You lose your patience when you are being patient sometimes because you give in to the temptation of anger, frustration, and you give in to it. And then you lose it. And then we become different people. That's what you do. Amen. Hallelujah. But most of all, out of all of these is the word forgiveness. Forgiveness to those who've hurt you. You have to forgive them. Whether they're here for you to tell them that you forgive them or whether they're not here. Because every time you hear their name, what's going to happen? Oh, you know, oh, I could tell you stories about that guy. Oh, you. That's what happens if you don't forgive them. Amen. And you just have to forgive them because the temptation 
to speak evil of them is there. Amen. God has given you the power to do that. God's voice can speak into your life and say, no, just leave it. Forgive them. Go on. Amen. And continue to grow in Christ. How to receive God's power to overcome temptations? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Admit you are weak. <gasps> Without God. Let go and let God. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You want the power and the strength of God? Become weak. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities and the power of Christ may rest upon me. You want the power of Christ to rest upon you? Let go and let God. Amen. And the power of Christ will begin to move in your situations. Amen. Because without God, we can't do anything. But with God, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me daily. Amen. Secondly, you have to affirm God's power and presence in your life. You have to acknowledge it. Remind yourself that you follow an all-powerful God. So when situations come in your life, you don't go, what am I going to do? <laughs> just go, oh, I'll just pray, believe God, and see what happens. Be calm. Relax in the power of God. Because God can take care of anything. If he says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me daily, that's what he means. We can do all things through Christ Jesus because we're strengthened daily by God. In every circumstance, in every trial, in everything we do, everything we face, we're strengthened by the power of God because we speak, God speaks back, and then we listen, and then we do. Amen. What a great way to live. Amen. Thirdly, align yourself. Now let's take a look at Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong? Oh, and a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. You have to remember that wherever you are, wherever you go, every moment in life, every second in life, the power and the anointing of God is with you. You are never alone without God. You're never alone without him. He's always there. Amen? So it doesn't matter where you are. You can call out to him. You can speak to him. Sitting in a car, reading a book, waiting for your wife to finish shopping. Put the book down. Begin to pray. Begin to think. I'm going to think on the good things. Think on what the Lord has done for me. And just begin to praise God. And let the presence of God touch you in that vehicle. Oh, man, you can have some glorious times. Hallelujah. You can release some problems and some strife and anxiety just by being in a car and worshiping God and allowing his voice to speak to you and allowing his power to draw upon you and minister to you. <laughs> what a great and awesome way to spend a few minutes with God. John 15, 3-5. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Amen. You have to align yourself up with God's will. It begins when we put our trust in Jesus. It begins at salvation. That's when your journey begins. That's when you align yourself up. Say, God, like I told you the story when I first got saved, I'm standing out in Harrison because I was working there and living there. Remember the story? And I'm out at the beach. God, what do you want me to do? I don't know what to do. I was nine months old in the Lord. and didn't have a clue what a Christian life was. I didn't have a clue. Didn't know what to do. Didn't have anybody telling me what to do. or, you know. And then he told me to preach. And then he put me in a church. And then I began to 
get monitored by those people in the church and asking them questions, stuff like that. So when we align ourselves with God's will, God begins to help us when we initially put our trust in Jesus as the forgiver of our sins. We have to realize that he's forgiven us. We have to let the voice of God speak to us as you are forgiven. And he'll do that in many ways. Amen. He'll begin to separate you from your former life. He'll begin to show you your former life wasn't all you thought it would be, and the life you have now is what he wants you to have. Does that not happen to all of us? Amen? Who's that happened to here? All of us. Amen? Because none of you had any idea what to do either when you were a Christian. Amen? Hallelujah. Secondly, when you align yourself with God, you have to let him lead your life. You have to let go and let God be the leader of your life. And you've got to quit leading your own Christian life. If you haven't let God control your life, and you're still trying to control your Christian life, you need to stop and let Jesus control your life. Amen? Because you're still carrying the same spirit you had before you were saved. You're still doing the same thing you had before you were saved. You're trying to control your walk in Christ as you controlled your life without Christ. Got to stop and let the Word of God control your life. Let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know anything of, which is the walk in Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. And this is a next one is something that a lot of people don't do right away. They do it when they mess up, trying to fix things themselves. Ask God for help. What's my favorite prayer word? Help. Because when I don't know what to pray for and I don't know what to do, I said, God, help me. Just help. I'm lost. I don't know what to pray. I don't know what to do. I haven't got a clue. And I need your help. Amen? And then you walk away from your prayer, and a couple of days later you're doing something, and then you realize God's helping you in exactly what you were praying for. Oh, thanks, Lord. <laughs> now I know what to do. Now I know how to face this situation. Now I know how to speak to this person. Now I know what to do with my finances. Now I know what to do. Amen. Because unlike some people in the kingdom of God, I don't know a whole lot. I'm not perfect, thank God. Anybody here perfect? The Bible says, be thou perfect even as I am perfect, but you'll never be as perfect as Christ. He's talking about being perfect in the Lord Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Let his righteousness live in you and guide you in life. Amen? We will make mistakes. How many here have made mistakes as a Christian? Amen? Some of you need to put your feet up too. Hallelujah. And you know what? You will continue to make mistakes until the day you die. Why? Because you're not perfect. So there's only two words you say to the Lord and you make a mistake. Sorry, Lord. Or some can use one word. Oops. Lord, I'm sorry. I always remember that David was the apple of the Lord's eye because he what? He knew how to repent. If you're never repenting of things in your life and God convicts you, you're going to be at that same point the rest of your life until you do. Repentance is the key to take you out of temptation, to hear the voice of the Lord speak to your life. You have to walk away from an unrepentant heart. I have a whole sermon on that. The unrepentant heart in a Christian church. Should I preach it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews eleven seven. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments. Least he walk naked and they see his shame. This is just speaking about being obedient to the word of God. Blessed is he that watches, keeps his garments. Keeps his salvation. Watch your life. Watch what's going on. 
watch the temptations that come before you and the destruction of evil that wants to rip you apart. Satan's not done with you. Satan's not done with you. You're not dead yet. You're not in the presence of the Lord yet. So he'll always be there attacking you, trying to lead you into temptation, try to take you away from Christ, back into his kingdom. He's not done with you. That's why you have to watch. That means you have to have a prayer life. You have to learn how to pray. You have to learn how to temper your own condition in Christ and know who you are in Jesus. When the battle comes forward, he does raise a standard against the battle, but we have to know what that standard is. And that standard is the voice of the Lord telling you to get on your knees and pray and cry out to him for help. Amen? It's not, why me, Lord? What have I done you wrong? Woe is me. Like God's a big God and heaven going to punish you every time you do something wrong. God wants to lovingly forgive you and minister to you all the time. How do I know? Well, if you got a few days, I can tell you the story of my salvation till up to today. You might not come back to church, but, you know, <laughs> but you know that God has worked in my life and helped me. Amen? So let God's voice speak into your life. Let him speak to you. He's got a powerful voice. If he can shake the cedars of Lebanon and destroy them, if he can destroy a mountain that's 9,000 feet high, if he can bring lightning down from heaven with all those thunderbolts and all that electricity, and his voice is stronger than that, how strong can his voice be in your life? Amen? Strong enough to destroy the work of the enemy. Amen? So let God's voice speak in your life. Praise God. That's all I have this morning. Thank you for listening. Amen? So I don't have to give an altar call this morning because I believe everybody here is saved. Amen. And have given their lives to Jesus. So I'm just going to ask you to consider your life, the temptations that come, the temptations maybe you still have in your life. Let God's voice speak to you so he can destroy those temptations. God, I don't want to do this anymore. God, I'm having a hard time overcoming this in my life. Speak to it. Deliver me from it. Help me. I don't know how many times I've said help me to the Lord in my life. You know, I'm always saying that to the Lord. Amen. And let's let God take control of your life. Give him reign over your life. It's a wonderful way to live. It really is. It's supernatural. Because you're living in the presence of the Lord. In his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pledges forevermore. It's a great way to live.